Hey everyone, how you doing? Today, let's talk about porcelain veneers and six things that you need to know about porcelain veneers before you actually go down the road to, um, to having them. Now, the first thing, and this is the most important thing, is that porcelain veneers, although all the celebrities are having them and you, know, you see them in the media so often, this is not the only treatment that is able to give you a fantastic looking smile. And we should always remember that it is just a treatment. Okay, And what I mean by this is that the end goal after you have your veneers or whatever it is that you want to have is to be able to look in the mirror and absolutely love your smile. Okay, You love that reflection that, that's looking back. And whenever anyone gets out of camera, you're not afraid to smile or anything like that. And the truth is that for especially a lot of younger people who haven't had loads of treatment done to, um, to their teeth in the past, other treatments like braces, just getting your teeth into a better position, a little bit of whitening just to bring out the smile, that can have a dramatic result and it's a lot less treatment than having porcelain veneers. So I think point number one is really just keep an open mind, see a cosmetic dentist who does all of these treatments, and they can walk you through all the different options which you have in order to achieve that perfect smile. Don't go somewhere thinking single-mindedly, I want veneers, because you know it might not be the best thing for you. The second thing to realize is if veneers is the right thing for you, there's a big difference in the quality of veneers that different dentists do. So if you go and see a, a cosmetic dentist and all they do is porcelain veneers and you know they've got amazing photos before and afters and things like that, then chances are it's going to be more expensive. They're going to use more expensive labs. They're going to spend more time getting the look of those veneers exactly right. You see, teeth aren't just white. They're a little bit more yellow at the neck of the tooth. They're a little bit more blue at the tips of the teeth. And they've got different textures. Different textures on the surface of the tooth reflect light differently and gives a much more natural appearance. Um, here's a photo that I just screenshotted. This is a dental practice advertising composite veneers. And these veneers, in my opinion, are just they're too blocky. I mean, it's okay. It's, it's probably better than where she started from. But it's not a really fantastic, natural-looking smile. So if you're one of those people who really wants things done really, really well, then spend the time researching, looking at before and after pictures of dentists and not the stuff you find on social media because that's all downscaled. Go into the practice, try and find high-resolution pictures and find someone who's really passionate about this stuff. If all you want is just block white teeth, then any dentist can do that, okay? And then you, you, know, you can go to the cheapest person anywhere and probably get an okay result. It all depends on your personal expectations and what you want to get out of this treatment. A lot also depends on budget because veneers are expensive, okay? They can be very expensive. It's kind of like recently I, I went shopping for a bike, okay, just um, a pedal bike, and I, I haven't shopped for a bike for ages, and there's a massive variation. People spend tens of thousands of pounds on bikes, and the there is a point where you start getting diminishing returns on stuff like that, but I definitely didn't want to go for the super cost-effective two, three hundred pound bike because I knew it would be absolutely rubbish and it, I'd end up buying something middle of the range anyway. The third thing that you need to know is veneers really dramatically change someone's appearance. So you want to be able to preview that change before you commit to the finals, okay? And this is something that we spend, we're really focused on this. This is one of the, the unique things about our practice in that the way we make our temporaries. Now, any good cosmetic dentist is going to make temporaries, maybe not the same way that we do, but in a way. And we call this a trial smile. All the whole smile is made from temporary materials first. And it lets our patients go home and just look at their smile in the comfort of their own home and they can you know let all the anesthetic wear off so you can see how your smile actually frames your your, your lips frame your smile and you can get feedback from family friends all that kind of stuff without committing to final porcelain veneers 
Now this this smile preview is really, really important because there's certain aspects of a smile which we have to get right, i.e. how much of the top tooth is on show when you smile. If we're changing the gum line, we need to be able to preview that before we commit to the finals. And once our patients are happy with the preview, and I'm happy with the bite, and we know we're not getting continual fractures and problems like that, then it gives us the confidence to make the porcelain veneers to that shape, and we know we're going to get a fantastic result. This is in contrast to places where they will do all your tooth adjustment, take a mold, just make average temporaries, which are really only there as a, a stopgap, or almost to, um, to stop sensitivity while the veneers are made. The lab will make the veneers without any guidance, and you kind of hope they got it all right. Okay, so there is this stage in the process of the veneers. It's time consuming. Not absolutely everyone's gonna do it, but I think all the reputable um, people will be doing stuff like this. So point number four is you don't need to have 20 veneers, okay? Sometimes less is more. So a lot of people think they need to have everything done. And this isn't true because it's always a good idea to minimize the amount of treatment you do, not only from a cost perspective, but also from a health perspective. This is always a, a good thing to do. And sometimes we'll be in a situation where actually only the front four teeth are causing the main disharmony in the smile so we can look at whitening and you know just brightening up the the, the natural teeth and then having porcelain veneers at the front and really the front four teeth make up maybe 60 70 percent of a smile so have something like that it's quite often we find the bottom teeth are a little bit uneven so instead of having veneers there we can just polish the edges to take the eye away from any sharp edges of the of the bottom teeth this is a much more cost effective treatment but not only that it's it's less treatment less upkeep in the future as well point number five is a about non-prep veneers. Okay, so if you've done a bit of research into veneers and types of veneers that you can get, you may have come across this. A non-prep veneer is a veneer which is done without adjusting the tooth underneath. And in my opinion, I, I don't think, I mean, there's probably a handful of cases where we've been able to do this. And, you know, I'm a really big advocate of doing as little treatment as possible, as little drilling as possible, because drilling is irreversible. And with porcelain veneers, the treatment is irreversible. You would never want to have this kind of treatment and then decide five years down the line, actually, no, I preferred my teeth back, you know, as they were. The only reason you might think that is if you ended up with a really bad looking set of veneers and by having that trial smile which I spoke about earlier that kind of eliminates that that kind of risk in there. Now the thing with non-prep veneers is you're sticking something over the top of your teeth and that's going to make your teeth look bulky. Now there is things called minimal prep veneers so when I say prep I really mean preparation to the teeth it's just the slang that dentists use and Minimal preparation means doing as little drilling as possible to reduce the bulkiness appearance of the teeth and still get a fantastic aesthetic result. Now, minimal preparation veneers are irreversible. All veneers, you should think of them as irreversible. It's it's a one-way street. You know, this is once you start this journey, you may have road bumps, but it's you know, that's it, it's a one-way street. And the last point is that veneers require upkeep, okay? It's not one of those things you just do it and it lasts forever. Veneers have a lifespan and we tell our patients that typically they last decades. And that's not bad, but we're, we're, we're deliberately vague about it because we don't know. We've had patients who have had veneers by dentists who've worked there before I have and their smiles are still looking amazing. Over time, what's going to happen is the gum shape is going to change a little bit. And if you look really closely, that margin, that edge where the tooth and the veneer meet, that can sometimes become visible. Sometimes the veneer can break. Um, and sometimes we'll be in a situation where a veneer just comes off. Okay, These are actually really rare considering how many veneer cases we do in any given month and over a period of years and decades that we've been doing this. The number of people who call us up and say, hey, look, one of my veneers has come off is really, really little. And where it's become a recurrent problem, um, again, you know, where the same veneer comes off several times, I can think of maybe two patients in the whole 
um, practice where this has been an issue. So we just make a fresh one and just start from scratch. Okay, we don't even charge our patients for that. But it's important to know that if you started off with a treatment like braces and whitening, then you don't have this kind of upkeep because you've still got your own teeth and the strength and integrity of your own teeth is still there. And let's say 15, 20 years down the line, if your teeth are particularly worn and you've got other problems at that stage, then you've always got the option of veneers at that stage. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, you know, please give it a thumbs up. Okay, so I mentioned cycling earlier on in this video, and, and the reason for this was that I'm, I'm actually doing a charity bike ride. Okay, we're raising money for four really great kids charities. And um, one of the things, okay, I like heavy metal. This, this is organized by a company called Heavy Metal Truants, and they do this every year. Okay, and this time I'm taking part. If you get something out of these videos, right, it would mean the world to me and to the kids you're going to help if you could just donate a little bit I'll put the link in the description below on how you can donate to this it would it would honestly make a massive massive difference if you if you found it in your heart to do that okay otherwise you know hit like if you've got any questions comments about anything I've mentioned this video you can leave them in the description below and I will try and answer all the all the questions all right guys until next time have a great day